Beth is 30 years old, a mom of two. She started out at 215 pounds at the beginning of our work together, and now she's in the 160 pound range. She's lost over 55 pounds, and today she's sharing her story with us. Hello my honeys, it's Emmy. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Emmy. I'm a nutritionist and the creator of the Slim on Starch program. If you want to work with me as well as a mindset coach and a nutrition coach, go to healthyemmy.org. Now let's meet my incredible client, Beth. I had struggled with my weight for about 10 years. Growing up, I was always very thin, um, never tried anything. I never dieted. I never exercised unless I had to. Um, and it was just like easy and natural for me. So I didn't really think about it. Um, I didn't know anything about nutrition. And um, once I got married and started cooking for a man, I thought, hey, well, this food tastes good. And I really enjoyed cooking. So I just kept going. And along with other things that um, contributed like uh, emotional eating and dealing with stress and things like that, it all accumulated rather quickly. And for the first time in my life, I was struggling with weight and I didn't have any clue how to deal with it. Um, so jumping down the line, I had had two babies in two years and I was <laughs> at my highest weight ever. I, I knew a lot about nutrition at that point. I had been vegan for a couple of years. Um, but like I could never lose weight and I never could figure out what I needed to do. I knew all the information, um, but I didn't know how to make the steps and it was kind of a information overload slash analysis paralysis type of situation. So um, I had tried exercising a really strict, not really strict. I wasn't hard on myself, but I really was dedicated for the first time in my life, really, um, with my exercise routine. So I had a good routine of every single day for six months. And I gained five pounds, didn't lose a single thing. <laughs> so that was incredibly frustrating. And at that point, even though I was eating healthy, I wasn't eating a bunch of junk food all the time. Um, I already ate a vegan diet and I was already familiar with the starch solution. So that was mostly implemented in my lifestyle, but I just could not figure out what little steps I needed to do to make progress. I knew I needed help to do things. Um, again, I knew the information, but I didn't feel like I knew how to make that happen for myself. So I stumbled upon this little YouTube channel called Emmy at the time. And I was like, hey, this girl knows her stuff. So I really enjoyed watching your YouTube channel and learning more information through you. And eventually I was like, maybe she can help me. So I sent you an email. And um, at this time last year, I just turned 29. And I'm like, this is the last year in my 20s. So I need to buckle down and get my life in order before I turn 30. Um, and so, and I think I had seen a video of yours recently. And then I was just like, you know, maybe it's just time to talk to Emmy. So I sent you an email and like three days later we were on a call. So that's how it started. <laughs> Can I ask some questions? Awesome. So you said that you didn't struggle with the weight. You always had, were a healthy weight, didn't worry about diet or exercise. How did you know that you had gained weight? Were your clothes not fitting? Could you see it in pictures? Was there a moment where you said, oh my goodness, I'm at a higher weight now? Um, the first time it really became clear that to me that I was gaining weight was uh, maybe a year or so after I had gotten married and I was at the doctor and they're like, Hey, this scale number is higher than it used to be. And I never honestly really thought that much about it before. Um, and I noticed like, you know, my clothes didn't fit and 
I knew I had gained some weight. I didn't know how much because I didn't even own a scale. Um, and then I saw that number and I was like, okay, well, this isn't fun. And honestly, it actually probably sent me more into a spiral because I felt helpless and I didn't know how to make a change. At that time, I was 21, maybe. Um, and I had no idea what to do. I didn't even know about veganism at that time. So that probably sent me more into a spiral and I gained even more weight after that. So in total, I gained probably 50 pounds in about a year and a half, which is a lot of weight really quick. And at that point I had started to think, okay, well, I guess I should exercise and eat better. But again, I had no knowledge and I just kind of went with what I thought I was doing right, which didn't help me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Do you feel comfortable sharing what weight you got up to? Uh, my highest weight before this program, I was 215 pounds. Hey, really quick, if you are enjoying this video, please give a thumbs up and click the subscribe button. It very much helps my channel. Which, in, when I say it out loud, sounds like an incredibly high number. And I feel like I was in denial a bit because, again, for much of my youth, it, my weight was never an issue and I never thought about it. Um, and when I was at that point, it just felt surreal, even though it had been a number of years that I was at that weight um, or close to it. And it just felt bizarre. Like, I'm like, how can I possibly be that much weight? I eat healthy, I'm vegan, um, and I still can't lose weight. And I just couldn't, put the piece together about how to make things happen. And you weren't just healthy and vegan, you were extremely well informed about this lifestyle. I mean, you you knew it all really. And, and when we first got to talking, I said, you know, finally we're doing this because you've been falling for so long and you watched all the videos and you, and you knew your stuff. So I can understand the, the emotions that come along with, why can't I put this into practice? Why don't I get the results when I know it all? Right. And part of that, we can talk about this more later if you want then, but part of that also went into my self-perception of who I am and my self-doubt and feeling like I could not, I knew all this information, but I still couldn't make it work. And I felt like a hypocrite in some ways because I would preach this to people like, you got to understand animal products are not healthy for you and oil is not healthy for you. And I still didn't eat that much oil. But at the same time, I'm like, how am I this much weight and telling people to eat healthy when I don't even look like a picture of health to them? Mm -hmm. Looking back on it, can you identify what the disconnect was? I think honestly, it's just been feeling powerless. And even though I had all the knowledge, I didn't feel like I had the power to do it. And part of that could be, you know, any reason from your past that you bring along with you. Um, but I think the biggest thing I've taken away from this program is just that I have the power to change my life. And really, once you grasp that simple concept, um, every facet of your life can change. Do you want to show off how much weight you released? So I have lost almost 50 pounds, which is wild. Going. <laughs> So wild. I'm so proud of you. And I'm sure people watching can see that you have some incredible makeup skills. And I remember on our first call, I complimented you. I said, your makeup is gorgeous. You're, you're an artist. I remember when we, when we got on that call, I was complimenting you on your makeup just because it looked so beautiful. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't looking to learn anything about its relationship with how you feel about yourself. And you said, well, actually, I mean, the reason why I'm so good at it is because as I've continued to gain weight, it's the one thing that really makes me feel good about myself is the makeup. And for me, that was a huge learning moment and also a window into what was going on inside of your mind that 
you felt you didn't have that confidence in one facet and had to amplify it in another. And I think that makeup is, it's art, it's beautiful. It's something that if you're good at it, show off that you're good at it and make something beautiful. What broke my heart was that it was, that was a window into how you were feeling about yourself and your weight. Uh, and I was so happy that you were vulnerable and shared that with me. So yeah, I've always loved makeup and I've always um, loved presenting myself well. Yeah, it also was just a way for me to try and make up what I was lacking with how I felt about my body. Um, I also knew I wasn't as healthy as I could be. And I always want to be the best that I can, whether that's presenting myself with nice clothes and makeup when I leave the house or presenting myself to my family as my whole best self in every way is just growing and learning and being your best self and always trying to learn more or grow more. I don't think that's something that will ever end in anyone's life. And if you keep working on doing those things, you will be amazed at how much more of you there is to learn about. I appreciate that you bring up the point that we can't do this from a place of hate. We can't hate our way into something successful. That's not going to work. We have to do it from a place of love. And the reason why we started working together is because you, you do have that respect for yourself and that love for yourself and that love for your family, wanting to be the healthiest mom that you can be and the healthiest wife that you can be and understanding this is, this is my body. It deserves to be healthy. And I've done loads of research on this. So I deserve the results because I put in so much work to learning about it. So let's, let's start to talk about the shift and how things started to change from what you were doing beforehand. Cause you knew all the information beforehand, but it wasn't getting put into practice consistently. So what changed as we started working together? The biggest thing that I noticed right away was the mindless eating that I was used to doing. Um, I have two small children who want snacks all day long. Um, and it was just a habit to get them a snack and eat a cracker or two before putting the box back in the cupboard. Or they didn't finish their peanut butter sandwich. So why would I throw that away? Um, and little things like that, that I think honestly come from um, a childhood with a little bit of scarcity where you don't throw things away. You don't get rid of things. Um, and, you know, we're blessed now that that's not a situation that we live in um, currently. And I don't need to worry about throwing away half a sandwich because it's not going to, it's not going to be a big deal. But what really shocked me was how much I didn't even think about it. It was just like a hand to mouth situation where every minute of every day I was eating because it was just around the house, even though I wasn't hungry and I wasn't looking for food because I wasn't listening to my hunger signals. Um, and once I learned more and I was more in tune with my hunger signals and I realized that I was also just eating because it was in front of me, those were the two biggest things that really made my mind aware of how much I was doing to myself without realizing it. How in the world do you rewire that habit? I know that is the habit of all moms listening to this. Part of it is just getting used to a new habit of not eating it. <laughs> um, yeah, just I think being aware of it was the biggest thing to help me realize that I was doing it. And once I was aware of it, I could remind myself, even though I can't even tell you how many times I had my hand in a box <laughs> and I look at a cracker in my hand or whatever it was, a pretzel or something. And I'd be like, no, not today. And I'd put it back and put it away. <laughs> and it is really catching yourself in those moments. And even though you could be bringing it to your mouth and then stop yourself, because even if you're doing it and if anyone who's watching this, you will notice if you pay attention, even though you're reaching for, 
a cookie or a piece of bread or whatever it is, an extra potato, if you're not hungry, you could be bringing it to your mouth and in the back of your mind, your brain is still going, I'm not hungry, I don't want this, I'm okay, I don't need it. And if you listen to that voice and you actually do what it's telling you, you have the power to put it down. Your hand is in motion, but it's not, the, the motion isn't completed until you've actually put it in your mouth. So if you have the strength, put it away, you will succeed 100%. Like <laughs> as long as you can just stop yourself and yeah, just have that internal strength. There's a quote, what if I just don't break this promise to myself? So now you are consistently fueling yourself on SOS foods. You're free and sober from the mindless eating. How do you feel? Really good. And most importantly, in control. Like anytime I've had a signature day in the last couple months, um, it's not been something that is gripping and is, how do I put this? It's not something that spirals out of control. Um, and it's, it's maybe a day or two, if I'm being honest, about <laughs> getting it back out of the house. Um, but for the most part, it's very easy for me to hop back on a potato train the next day. And um, it's something I almost look forward to as much as I enjoy having a fun day with family or something that we have something that's not entirely SOS. Um, I'm usually feeling it by the end of the day. Not like I feel terrible, but I definitely feel like I didn't eat my normal food. Um, and the next day I'll wake up and I'll have my broccoli and my oatmeal for breakfast. And it's just routine. It's just easy to get back on and I don't have to think about it. Um, it's not something that I'm stressing about planning. Um, it's just back to normal life now. You brought up a good point, which is that you don't follow 100% SOS 100% of the time. You haven't done this quote unquote perfectly, which is such a silly way to look at it because there is no perfect diet. There's the perfect diet for us. So thank you for saying that for people that are like, I can't do this perfectly. So, I mean, I can't, I can't do this, but <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> How do you not fall into that black and white mindset of when you have the one or two days that are eating the fun foods, um, the sometimes foods? How do you not let that spiral? I think it's important to live your life without feeling so confined by something. Um, and you talk about this through the program, that if you let food control you, then you have no control. And like I've said, if you want control, you gotta take it. But that means also letting yourself have those times where you're just living life. And everybody should have cake on their birthday. Some people want a watermelon cake and some people want a real cake. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I don't think, like you say, food should not be villainized. It's just food. And I you know our traditions are often centered around food for holidays and special occasions. And I don't think that that's a bad thing. Um, yeah, I just think, you know, if you want the cake, eat the cake. But also, find ways to let yourself feel free in a sense that are still compliant. So what I did and helped me tremendously was potato pudding. And <laughs> that for the first time is like, what is wrong with her? That's insane. <laughs> it's amazing. And any time where I was feeling like I just really need something sweet or I'm just, you know, I was having a down day and as much as 
Um, other primary foods are really, really important um, to get yourself away from emotional eating. Sometimes you just want to have some chocolate and that's okay. So in order to have some and also stay on plan for what I wanted to do. And one thing that I think is also really important is to recognize um, what your, your goal is and how important that is to you. And I think people can slip into this, well, I deserve to have it because I had a bad day or, you know, treat yourself kind of mentality. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you always live by that, you'll never get where you want to be. And are you really treating yourself if it's actually hurting your progress to be the person that you want to be? So if you're struggling with that, try some potato pudding. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have this sometimes as a snack. I keep it in my fridge and I'd have it with some carrots. And it was, it felt, it felt like I was treating myself, but I also knew that I wasn't hurting my progress or um, holding myself back from what I truly wanted was, which was to, you know, succeed on this lifestyle and reach a goal weight that was healthy. I'm going to link your potato pudding in the description bar. So people will have that recipe there. It really was a game changer. <laughs> and um, recognizing immediate consequences versus delayed consequences. The immediate consequences of eating this is, wow, it would taste really good. The delayed consequences are, uh, this is not good for my health. And then we look at, what if I had an SOS meal right now? What if I had potato pudding? The immediate consequences, you feel really good. And the delayed consequence, you feel really good. So you get, it's better to take the SOS route. <laughs> exactly. What advice, Beth, would you give to yourself if we could have gone back eight I months ago when we started working together? What would you have told yourself then? I think I would have told myself um, to really believe in my success before it happens. Um, a lot of people are aware of manifesting um, or positive thinking, the power of the mind. Um, and as much as I knew I needed this program to get where I wanted to be, I didn't truly, really 100% believe that it was going to work, not because of anything with the program. I 100% believe in the science and the program. I didn't believe I could do it because I didn't think I had the strength to be perfect. I had this mentality, this story that I'd created for myself that I wasn't the type of person who could be disciplined. I wasn't the type of person to, um, you know, give up something that I thought I loved, which was like, you know, cooking with oil <laughs> um, and give that up for steamed potatoes and broccoli. It that didn't compute in my mind. I was like, there's no way that's gonna happen and that I would enjoy doing it. Um, but really through the process, of replacing that emotional attachment to luxurious food and switching that dependence, really truly an emotional dependence onto something else like my love of singing and painting and being outside in the summer and fall, not let it fall, um, you know, replacing that emotional tie to something tangible like art and music and people um through that process my mind shifted and that's when I really felt my mental when I really felt my um 
mental progress was seeing that I've changed so much. And I was saying this the other day on my Instagram, <laughs> there was a time when I started this program, I never thought I would enjoy eating vegetables for breakfast. But now if I don't have broccoli in my house in the morning, you better believe I'm going to the store to get broccoli <laughs> so have breakfast <laughs> because it doesn't feel right to not have it. And I don't mean that in the sense that I'm doing something wrong if I don't have vegetables for breakfast. I mean that I want vegetables for breakfast because it feels good. And I know that it's good for me. And I know when I don't have vegetables for breakfast, vegetables for breakfast, it's entirely going to affect the rest of my day. And that progress means something to me more than just losing weight and being healthy. It means that I have that power to choose to eat broccoli for breakfast because I know that by the end of the day, I'm not going to be starving, thinking that I'm starving and looking for anything to eat in my house. It looks like you learned about yourself that not only do you have the power and the control over food to lose weight, but you have the power and control to do a lot more than that. And there's this, in the, in the power of now, it opens up by saying, you know, there's a beggar on the street and he's sitting on a box and somebody walks by, he says, please, can you give me something? And he says, I can't give you anything, but open up the box that you're sitting on. And he opens up the box and there's a bunch of gold in it. So it's not that I gave you strength or power or control, you had it. We just couldn't see it at the time. And now you can see the strength and the power that you do have. And I think that's really important for everyone to grasp in their life. that You always have had that power. It's just recognizing it and taking hold of it. If you want to get results like Beth, then please click the link in the down bar, go to healthyemmy.org, and I will see you on our call. I love you, honeys, and I'll see you in my next one. Woo! Yeah.